I would like to begin this morning with the reading of Psalm 105, verses 1 through 5. I really appreciate what Scott shared this morning. It was right in line with what I wanted to share. It says, Give thanks to the Lord. Call on His name. Make known among the nations what He has done. Sing to Him. Sing praise to Him. Tell of all His wonderful acts. Glory in His holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord in His strength. Seek His, seek His face always. Remember the wonders He has done, His miracles and the judgments He pronounced. Our God is uh, quite an amazing God. And He's an awesome God. He's a great God. He's the reason that we exist. He's the reason that this church family exists. He's the reason that we come together every week. And He is very worthy of us raising our voices like we have already this morning in song uh, and in thanksgiving. He's, he's worthy of our lives. So this morning, what I would like to emphasize is that we should remember all that God is all that he has done, as we see in verse 5 of this psalm. You know, that, that was a bit of a problem for the nation Israel. See, unfortunately, they were prone to forget all that God had done for them. And what did it do? It led to them falling away from God. It led to Israel conforming to the ways of the wicked nations around them. So I hope and I pray that as individuals, as a church family, that we will not forget all that God has done, all that He's doing, and that we will continually look forward to eternity. Now each year about this time, we like to take some time to remember all that the Lord has done for us, <clears throat> through us, for us as a church family over this last 12 months. I hope that we um, never think that we have to wait for the spectacular or the miraculous before we offer up praise and thanksgiving to God. Instead, I hope that we will look back at everything, large and small, and give thanks for the faithfulness of our wonderful God. So before we begin, let's just bow our heads again and give thanks and, and commit our time. Thank you, Lord, for who you are, for all that you are. What a blessing it is to know you, as Scott said, to have a relationship with our Maker. Lord, you are the reason we're here this morning. Your Holy Spirit unites us all together into the body of Christ. So we thank you for the privilege, the opportunity that we have to gather together in song and praise and worship and in your word. Lord, I know we're not going to look as much at your word as we normally do this morning. But Lord, as we think back and look back and remember all that you've done, might you be magnified in us and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I, I thought before we actually look back at this last year, I thought it'd be good to first consider our history as a church. You know, God has blessed us immensely over the last 39 years that we have been in Indianapolis. The first team came here in 1985, and we initially met in a home. Actually, it was an apartment. And then we moved into a small little chapel inside of a retirement uh, center. And uh, then we moved into the waterfront, the old waterfront plaza hotel. And then 10 years later, in 1995, the Lord provided the means, the opportunity, and the growth to be able to purchase land and build this facility and move in in the spring of 95. And countless numbers of lives have been impacted in those 39 years. And there are a few things that have helped us stay on task and be fruitful over those years. 
our mission, our vision, our values. So I just want to have a quick review of those things. Our vision statement says that we want to help people enter into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and become his devoted followers. Now, we get that vision statement from Colossians 1.28, which says, we proclaim him, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. Through the work of the Holy Spirit, through those in this church family, we've seen many people come to Christ over all these years. And we've done that through community outreach. We've done that through personal invitation, testimony, personal relationships, and through our campus ministry. And how encouraging it is to see those men and women who come to Christ join us and grow up in their relationship with Christ over those years. Now, the vision statement incorporates our mission, which in essence is the Great Commission. Matthew 28, where the Lord Jesus commands his followers to go and make disciples, baptize them, and then teach them to go and do the same thing. You know, I, I personally am very, very thankful for the church family and the work that God has done in my life through his church. You know, some 45 years ago, the Lord placed people in my life who shared the gospel with me and helped me to grow up in my relationship, grow in my faith. You know, I have, I have loved and cared for my parents and my siblings over the years, but I just have to say that nothing compares to the relationships that I have in the church family, the family of God. There's something about laboring together for the cause of Christ, you know, that really unites our hearts. And at Eagle Creek, you know, we have a set of core values, and they've been key to seeing the church become effective in carrying out the vision and the mission. Now, we don't have time to expand on them this morning. We could do a teaching on every one of them. I just want to review them real quick before we move on. <clears throat> First core value is the grace of God. The grace of God that comes through Jesus Christ. That is the basis and the power for our salvation, for our personal lives, for our ministry, and for our relationships with one another. Only, only by God's grace can we as a church family even begin to accomplish all that's on God's heart. Next, we desire that each person have a commitment, a commitment to God and a commitment to His Word. That is marked by a wholehearted devotion through prayer and through reading, studying, obeying, and then sharing His Word. We've already highlighted the next one, the church, the community of believers, and God's vehicle, if you will, for accomplishing the Great Commission. God never intended for individuals to go out and accomplish His will alone. It's through His church. Through the church, people are one to Christ. And within the church, people are built up to maturity. And leaders are raised up within the church. Love and unity. We desire our ministry to be marked by a Christ-like selfless love, loyalty, and unity with fellow believers. And you all are a wonderful example of love and unity. Raising godly families. You know, strong families are foundational for strong churches. So we make it a priority to help members in the church to build up their marriages, strengthen their families. And finally, every member a minister. You know, all Christians, not just some, 
All Christians are empowered through the Holy Spirit to be workers in the church. So we seek to equip members of the church to utilize their spiritual gifts in serving other people. So as we begin to look at some of the events, activities, and different things from this past year, keep these core values in mind because they're the basis for our carrying out our day-to-day church life. So first, let's look at some things that have helped us to do that, to build up the body of Christ. Now first, and I know we talk about this regularly, but it's vital. Life groups, growth groups, they're ongoing, they're week to week, they're month to month, they're year to year. And we'll thank, we're thankful that these groups continue to be a, a major factor in deepening the relationships that we have. And helping us to be accountable in being devoted to God. Now, if you're visiting this morning, I just want to let you know what these things are. Life groups are what some may refer to as small groups. They're groups of anywhere from, I don't know, six to 14 people that gather together regularly for fellowship, sometimes for meals, to discuss the Word together in one form or another, sometimes spiritual help books we might read together, uh, to pray for each other, and to help meet each other's needs that might come up in that particular group of people. Uh, growth groups are what some might, have called, might call accountability groups. Much smaller, two to three to four people. And they meet regularly to encourage one another, to sharpen each other, to hold each other accountable, to read the Word, and in personal matters in our personal lives. And in these groups, we pray for one another, and we pray for those that we're trusting God to work in their lives to bring them to Christ, maybe people we work with, people that we live around. Now, this last year, we've had at least eight different life groups and close to 80 people in those groups. And we hope and pray that each one of you in this church family can find a life group and or growth group that you can plug into. We all need others. We all need others and can benefit. Others can benefit from your gifting as well. So if you have questions about how to be connected in any of these ways, and please talk to any of the pastors, we'd be glad to help you with that. And I did just also want to give a big Thank you and shout out to those who are leading or facilitating uh, life groups. We thank you for your commitment to building up the body of Christ. Now, each year we also consider what we might do to help our marriages and our families. And some years we have held marriage conferences. Some years we have held parenting conferences. In the spring of this year, we had a wonderful many marriage conference, and we invited Pat and Cindy Sokol from Colorado to come and present a relational skills conference. It was so neat because Pat and Cindy were also at the Fusion Conference, and Pat was one of the main speakers there. It was good to hear from them again, but at our marriage, uh, little marriage retreat, there were several main sessions. God's big idea for marriage, created with needs, creating connection, practical biblical assertiveness, and confession and forgiveness. And then it it was fun because a few of the the couples from our sister church in West Lafayette came down. They were able to join us for that weekend. It was a big turnout and uh, good fellowship, good food, good teaching. I think it was an opportunity for many couples to learn and to grow and strengthen their relationships. Now, we're also thankful for the women in the church family. And this past year, there have been many opportunities for the women of all ages to come together, to grow together, enjoy fellowship together. I think early in the spring in March, several of them came together to to do some craft work, if you will. And then in January, they began a 10-week Bible study of Titus chapter 2, They would meet one or two times a month, and finally, I think they completed the series at the annual women's retreat that took place in August. 
Sharon Trout invited them all out to her and Bob's lake home, and they, I know they had a great turnout, a great time of fellowship, a great opportunity for dining together, for praying together, and uh, discussing the Word together. This fall, Cindy Holtman invited the women out to her home uh, for a demonstration of how to, to make and can applesauce, and I just want you to know, I'm still waiting for my applesauce. <laughs> Maybe one day. Earlier this month, Emily Cesar invited the women to her and Drew's home for a time of fellowship and food and crafts and fun together celebrating the Christmas season. So if you would like to find out more about how you can get involved with some of these women's things, or maybe you've got some ideas uh, that you'd like to do, then please talk to Kelly Harmon or Tina McLean. Now, you know, the men, they never like to be outdone. They've had some wonderful opportunities as well. Uh, you like that? Greg Harris, he's organized a regular men's bacon, no, men's breakfast. And uh, yeah, it's so that the men can have their fill of bacon and enjoy some great fellowship. Here's some awesome testimonies from different ones in the church. Uh, this year, we heard from several, and it was so good to hear testimonies, some that I had not heard before. Dale Hitchings and Scott McLean and Alex Glennon, Dan Barnard, Bill Pfeiffer, Jake Holtman, all had a chance this year to share testimonies. In the spring of this year, we, we had a great opportunity at our, uh, to meet together at our men's retreat, and uh, we had the privilege of teaming up with men from another church, Horizon Christian Fellowship. It was a great opportunity to meet other men in Christ and see what God is doing in their lives. Our theme at our retreat focused on biblical manhood as found in 1 Timothy. We met at a little church camp just south of Indianapolis. It was perfect for our time together. So if you'd like to find out more about men's ministry, how you can get involved or have some ideas, and please talk to Greg Harris or talk to me. We'd love to hear from you. Now, we're excited about a couple of new initiatives that have taken place this year. You know, over the years, our high school group has, has gone like this. And uh, it's just the nature of church growth, I think. Um, sometimes we'll have a few, sometimes we'll have several. Um, so this year we had a few more. We were able to actually uh, begin something a little more formal. And uh, so we encourage them to meet with us uh, on Sunday mornings during the message time. And uh, I just wanted to give thanks to Ben and Jen Esterline and Jake and Anna Holtman uh, for working together to bring, you know, these young men and women together to come alongside the parents and, and help them grow in their faith and build relationships with each other. I know they've already had a lot of regular meetings on Saturday evenings and some fun and exciting events together as well. Now, in addition to that, uh, Nikki Knipp and Emily Cesar have also put together a wonderful program for the little ones. I think it goes from age four through eighth grade program called All Stars. They meet every Thursday evening with an emphasis on scripture memorization, Bible teaching, games. And uh, as the children memorize verses, then they earn little all-star bucks, I think, and they can use them to make little purchases, including items for the food pantry. I thought that was a great idea. It's been a blessing for our children, for the parents. And I know that our grandchildren, they just always look forward to, to those Thursday evenings. I also wanted to thank the Gordon family as well, because I know they're a huge support and part of that program. And we know God is and will continue to use it to come alongside the parents to help our children know Christ and grow up in Christ. And then we certainly want to recognize and uh, you know, recognize our children's ministry on Sunday mornings. It's very, very vital, I think. We're thankful for Penny Buer uh, and the, the passion and the love and the concern that Penny has for our children and for the families in the church. And we wanted to thank all of you who have been willing to volunteer. 
I know it's hard to give up hearing, you know, the message, uh, but God uses it to build in the lives of our little children. So we thank you for your sacrifice and your willingness to take turns and be part of that ministry. You know, we, we may not be able to reward you here, but your reward will certainly be in heaven. Now, one fun event we try to have each year is look who's coming to dinner. And I, I'd almost forgotten about it, but it's such a good time. It's a blessing to either be a host or uh, a guest with someone in the church that you might not normally spend much time with. And each time we do it, it's encouragement. It's a blessing. Uh, Leah Redden, Jen Esterline, they've worked together in the past, and I do believe that they're going to try to put one together for this winter or early spring. This fall, we had a real treat. Bob Powell's been studying the book of Revelation and the end times, and we had the privilege of having Bob take us through several weeks after the service to share all that he's been learning. He gave us some extremely helpful handouts, challenged us to consider the end times perhaps in a light that we hadn't considered before. It was very helpful. So thank you, Bob, for your willingness uh, to share your understanding of the end times with us. More recently, as a reminder, uh, the Lord provided for Dan Barnard to be on staff with me at the beginning of this month, and Dan is still waiting for his first paycheck. (laughs) No, he's actually gotten his first paycheck. We're thankful for all of you for for making that possible. Uh, We're thankful for your faithfulness in giving, for your generosity, thankful that God has helped us to be good stewards of what you've given. Uh, So pray with us that God will continue to use additional staff to help us grow and build the Lord's church. And we want to highlight two very important groups of people. I think they often go unnoticed, but the tech team, they work so hard, not just to put together the service every Sunday morning, but many events that go on outside. There was an event yesterday that they were here for and making sure it ran well with sound and lighting and presentation software, live streaming, so much more. So we thank Bob Trout for his passion to do things well and for leading his team that includes Jake Holtman, Leah Redden, Clark Butler. We really appreciate them. We want to give thanks and consider all those involved in the worship teams. That's also a huge sacrifice. The vocalists, the instrumentalists, the worship leaders. God uses you all every Sunday morning to lead his church in song, and in doing so, our Lord is magnified. So thanks to Dan Barnard, Jay Bailey, Will McLean, and Scott McLean, all who have led out uh, in our worship team ministry. What a wonderful year it has been for the church family, and yet, sometimes, the family experiences hardship. You know, this past year has been no exception. We've lost two wonderful men of God. Greg Holtman in March of this year. Lamont Fisher, August of this year. We had an opportunity to come together and remember their lives and to mourn together with their wives and families. We're thankful for all that God had done in them and through them. And we're thankful for their eternal life. We're thankful for the opportunities that God gave His church to come alongside Cindy and Jackie and their families with much love and support and comfort. And we're also missing some dear family members who are no longer meeting with us because maybe they've moved or for other various reasons. And it's difficult when family members leave. And yet we're glad that they can continue to be a blessing to others where the Lord leads them, directs them. We're also thankful that whenever it seems we've lost family members because someone moved for various reasons or whatever, the Lord always brings us new family members. What a blessing it is. We're thankful that 
If you've joined us this year, we really appreciate being a part of us. And what a blessing it is to see the Lord adding to the church family through new birth. Uh, no doubt, our young families are growing. What better way to grow the church, huh? Uh, we've had the blessing of adding six new births to our families this year. Amara Smith, Toby McLean, Nora Glennon, Zachary Winkler, Valerie Knipp, Jonathan Port. Boy, that's so exciting. And as I mentioned earlier, our core values are a vital part of church family life. And in carrying out the core values, uh, we'll be in a good place to carry out our mission. So I want to take a few minutes now to consider how we've been, been involved in outreach. Outreach. Now, in the spring, we held our annual community Easter egg hunt. Now, I want to tell you, I don't think it ought to be called an Easter egg hunt because I think it's more of a mass egg gathering than it is an egg hunt. <laughs> There's not many places to hide eggs in two and a half acres of grass, but it's a blast to see the children scatter and in a matter of a couple minutes clean up the whole place, the entire property of, I don't know, almost a thousand eggs, I think we normally do. And this year, as always, we try to share a brief gospel message, make sure that each family goes home, not with just candy and eggs, but gospel tracts and information about the church. The same goes for our annual trunk or treat. This year, we had upwards of like 500 people, including children and parents, come through this event. And, and we always combine it uh, for the last two or three years with Life Church across the street. That's been a real blessing. I think this year we may have set a record for the coldest trunk or treat we've ever had. And yet, and yet it was very successful. I mean, think about it, 500 people still showed up. Families enjoyed collecting candy, playing games, bouncing in the bounce house, enjoying some hot food and drink. And again, at that event, we make sure each family is invited to contact us, visit us, and we make sure that, that they go home with the gospel track. Now this year we also had, I didn't get the pictures lined up properly, but we also had a community extravaganza in the summer. And unfortunately, if you remember, it turned out to be a pretty rainy day. But we moved it indoors and we had a lot of fun inside the building uh, with some indoor games uh, and things like that. Now, these types of events are never meant to be our only means of getting the gospel out. But they are a way for us to let the community around us know that we're here, that we want them to feel welcome on our property and in our building, and that we care enough that we want to give them a safe and fun opportunity to come together with their neighbors. We're trusting that God will use these things for eternity. We believe that in these events, many seeds are sown, and we should continue to pray that God will use them uh, for spiritual fruit. Now, in addition, we trust God to use our food pantry. We're thankful for Greg Harris, for Angie Reisner, Mark and Ruth Rorda, Bob Pottle. They come faithfully every time. I know Bob is kind of our substitute. We appreciate him doing that. But handing out food, praying with those who come through. So we're trusting God is using it. Uh, I did also want to thank Emily because it's a chore for her to go out and replenish that food pantry every time. Transporting that many groceries is a chore. So we thank her for doing that. Now, we want to emphasize that one of our most effective means, I believe, of getting the gospel out is through our campus ministry the rock at IUPUI. Now, I think it's going to be weird. Uh, after this next semester, it is officially no longer IUPUI. It's going to be uh, IU Indianapolis or Purdue Indianapolis, two separate campuses. At one point, it'll be that. So I don't know what we're going to call it, if it's going to be the, the rock at IU. I don't know, but we'll have to pray about that. But we want to thank Alex Glennon, his wife Abby, and all those, all those in the church who are a vital part of the team and are involved on campus. Every week they have a table at the campus center 
uh, with provocative questions or statements on a whiteboard, inviting students to come by and write their response to it on the whiteboard. And in that way, they engage with students all the time at the table, uh, opportunities every week to share the gospel, to get engaged in spiritual conversations. And every week they have two uh, different meetings going on. One is a Bible study, and then the other one is our weekly gathering where they come together for refreshments, a short teaching, a time for discussion and fellowship. This fall, they once again invited Tom Short and Rich Suplita to come and preach on campus for three days. In those three days, many, many seeds were sown, <clears throat> lots of spiritual conversations and contacts made. And in the fall, we uh, had our annual convergence conference. Uh, we team up with uh, our sister church in West Lafayette. It's for college students, young adults, and Tom Short was again the main speaker this year. Uh, very, very, very exciting uh, time and, and a good time of spiritual growth. So please continue to pray that God will continue to use that vital ministry to reach many young men and women for Christ. You know this, many of you are here because of the ministry on that campus and uh, many families now are uh, involved in this church because of the work done on that campus. So. We pray that uh, they will God will continue to use it. And pray, too, that Alex will be fully funded. He's very, very close, very, very close. So pray for his complete funding. Now, there's another way that we're seeing many seeds sown, actually, on the entire west side of Indianapolis and the suburbs. Uh, we have been and continue to support Willis Overton of FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, both financially and through prayer. You know, Daryl and Tammy Hall introduced Willis to me, I don't know, several years ago. Uh, he went to high school with their son, Darren. So I was able to meet Willis uh, on campus while I was volunteering there at Marion University. We had lots of Bible study together. We talked about spiritual leadership. Well, Willis, after he graduated, immediately became uh, a staff uh, member with FCA full-time, and he's on his way. He, he, he's quite the young man. He's on his way to regional responsibilities. He works with students, coaches all over the west side of Indy. He helps sponsor their annual sports camp, and I think the Pike High School football team was a part of that camp. Many of them didn't know the Lord. Uh, wonderful ministry, so we're thankful for the many lives that are impacted through that work as well. In addition, uh, we've all been part of reaching the world with the gospel through finances, through giving, and through prayer support. Uh, missionaries and churches in India and Nepal, Germany, the Philippines, Nicaragua, Costa Rica. Thousands of people all over the world are hearing the gospel. And in some cases, in some of these places, hundreds every week are coming to Christ. It's an amazing thing. So thank you all for uh, your own support, uh, that you've been uh, with us in prayer, uh, support for these works across the world. Now, there are a few things that we are involved in that I know many of you don't see. We want to make you aware of these things. Now, we are no longer part of a national organization, but we do still have relationships nationally. And uh, we are involved with a group of seven of those churches that were part of that National Association of Churches in the four states, uh, Indiana, Wisconsin, um, help me out, Iowa, and Illinois. Uh, seven churches there. We call it the Midwest Church Alliance. It's not a formal organization. It's an informal gathering of pastors, lay leaders, churches, and together this past year, we held a pastor and wives retreat together. We have pastor's meetings. We meet four times each year. Uh, we seek to encourage one another, spur one another on, as well as consider how we might effectively maybe work together in the gospel uh, and in reaching the lost. We've also reinstituted what we call the Leadership Institute, where we invite inspiring young men and women to come and learn leadership principles, doctrinal teachings, 
they, it provides an opportunity to develop relationships with others in this little band of churches. Now finally, we, we, we uh, want to again remember that our God is faithful. And uh, as the church is faithful in giving, we always ask God to help us be good stewards of what is given. Stewardship involves keeping good care of things, keeping things in good condition, and providing a good testimony to those around us. So God has helped us uh, to get through the zoning process. It was, I don't know, six or seven or eight months for that particular zoning process process, finally got that accomplished and have our new uh, lit sign up by the street. I already had one neighbor, I went to our neighborhood association meeting not too long ago, and one neighbor just said, told me how much they really appreciated and, and liked our new sign. And many of you know that we have a patio poured for a picnic shelter, and we uh, hoped to have it up this fall, but once again, we've run into some permitting issues. So pray for God's grace, His favor, and for wisdom. We hope that we can have it up this spring. So as you see, there's a lot to be thankful for. And I know I probably forgot some things. I probably missed some things and some people. We appreciate you all. Um, so I appreciate the opportunity to talk about the wonderful year that we've had together. God has been faithful. It's been a real blessing to see how every one of you have been a, a vital part of this work. Uh, so please pray as we enter this new year that God will lead, guide, direct, and grow this church. Pray that we will remain firm and always remember who our God is and never allow our lives be influenced by the world around us, but rather that we'd be transformed always by the renewing of our minds. Amen? Let's pray. Lord, thank you for who you are, for all that you are. Our Lord, our Creator, our Savior, our eternal life. We thank you. We praise you. We thank you for the church, the body of Christ, Lord. I know that we are one small family of believers among churches all around the world. And you care about each and every one of them. And you're working through all of them. We thank you for the work you're doing here. Thank you for the things that we've been able to be a part of. We pray that you would lead, guide, and direct us into this new year. That you would be magnified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.